Well, let's get more on the Ebola epidemic now. And we're joined by Rob Telpaley, a Liberian writer and PhD researcher at the University of London School of Oriental and African Studies. And by Marcus Manuel, a senior research associate at the Overseas Development Institute. Good evening mm. to you both. Uh, Rob Telpaley, um, we were speaking to the Deputy Health Minister in Liberia earlier on. Uh, the similar picture being uh, presented and painted by the president that the situation may have been out of control but now it is in under control. Do you believe that? Well, as someone who speaks to my family in Liberia almost on a daily basis, there's still quite a bit of hysteria in the country about the fact that things are not 100% under control. I was reading on the news not too long ago about a man in one of our sub-political divisions, Liberia has 15 counties, and he literally with his bare hands, this old man, probably 50 or 60 years old, has been bearing suspected Ebola patient bodies. Um, obviously, he's filling a gap that the government has not filled. This is just today that I read the story. Um, there are cases of people who are dying from common ailments, malaria, typhoid, heart attacks, um, who are not being attended to, taking their family members to hospitals. Because all of the hospitals. focus is on Ebola. Yes, to hospitals um, and being turned away because there aren't enough spaces in the hospitals. So I think that's an important point to make is uh, perhaps it's not as under control as it could be. Hey, Marcus Manuel, we've heard President Obama and mm -hmm. indeed British ministers saying we're doing all we can to help in these situations. Are we in, in reality or is it just a question of the help not getting to the right places? No, I, th I think the uniform view that's come out very strongly that's not enough is being done and we do need a real step change. We were very struck at the Overseas Development Institute at a public event where you had Dr. David Nabarro, who's the UN Special Envoy, the Brit that's been parachuted in to try and help get a grip on this. We had the Médecins Médecine Sans Frontières was there and also someone from King's who was there too, um, who's been, been involved there. And they were all clear that a step change is required and masses more is needed. Um, and if you look at the numbers, if you look at the numbers in terms of the projections, um, the scale of even the new response that's coming in is only going to capture maybe 10% of what we fear is going to be there in just eight weeks' time. I mean, the problem is you see a situation, as, as Alex Crawford was reporting on, the very necessary but sort of mm. dramatic intervention of people in... Uh, you know, protective gear and uh, and all yeah. that. But actually, if you haven't got the infrastructure, people who can go around and look after children or uh, in, in, ensure that normal medical needs are being taken care of, you're fighting a losing battle, aren't you? Well, absolutely, and I think the tragic case of the Spanish nurse that we've heard about just shows how risky it is to uh, be treating people with Ebola, but also if you're just caring for someone with Ebola and you haven't got a protected suit, the tragedy is the carers are dying and they're getting infected too. Uh, um, we were talking about aid and the donations that have been made by various countries. The Liberian Deputy Health Minister earlier talking about the pledges being one mm -hmm. thing, but actually we need to get that money. Also need to ensure that that money is being spent in the right way. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's absolutely important. Um, the pledges are, are phenomenal. I think people are sending in a lot of goodwill. Um, but beyond just the pledges, I think the president always says we need to shorten the road between commitment and cash. Um, well, there has been some concern about the way in which the Liberian government has been spending some of the money. Sure, that's I mean, been even the Senate has come out and said that there's, mm -hmm. it's, it's important to have more transparency, even in the amount that was allotted of five million. Um, and the finance minister has come forward and said that they will have an audit, and the expenditures report is going to be on the Senate floor very soon. But there are questions. I mean, beyond just the political implications of the aid coming. In. The United Nations has said that a billion dollars of foreign aid is needed. How much of it is actually there? No. Uh, the latest count was a third of that was funded, so I agree there's a lot of need to work out how to track that. Um, I think credit to the Liberian government for one of the things they've done, uh, which is they are arranging for direct payments now to go into Ministry of Health workers' bank accounts, and these are not only their salaries but also the incentives or the recognition uh, of the extra money that's required for to, doing to, to, to do for job. doing an incredibly dangerous and, as Alex's piece said, a very very brave job. So that's that's now going straight into people's bank accounts. So they're, they're being innovative about how they're trying to respond in that way. What what else is needed from the international community uh, as well as money in terms of assistance? I think this is the really big missing element, and what is very clear, it's the engagement of the military. It's very striking. Médecins Sans Frontières said the only people who know how to operate at the scale we now need to operate are military who have been trained in working in biochemical and germ warfare kind of environments. They know how to work in these you know, incredible plastic bodysuits. And it was very striking last week, 34 UK charities all said the same thing. 
but there's a need to have the military involved. At the moment, the soldiers are just going out to build the hospitals. They need it also. They've got the skills to actually run them. And unless that happens, we're just not going to get the scale. And this, conf this disaster is increasing by a factor of 10 every two months. So it is moving very, very fast. So the longer we delay and don't realize what we need to do, the worse the situation is going to get and the more you know, the suffering will be in Liberia. Is it going to be possible for armies, troops to come in and operate or, or will they be Well, I think, I mean, the, I think the US government has said that they're going to send in 3,000 troops, some of whom are on the ground, but I think beyond the troops setting up the infrastructure, we need medical personnel on the ground, we need equipment, we need supplies. So, um, you know, beyond the troops and the army personnel, I think what's more needed is, is the medical personnel. And governments such as Cuba have been sending in me medical personnel. The African Union has sent in medical personnel as well. And I think the government has even responded by setting up mobile testing units for people to go in and test whether or not they actually have Ebola. Ambulances are coming on the ground. I think 12 of them were, were, were sent as well. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.